I'm Warren Fay. I'm a, a writer, but I'm also um, a record producer, a music publisher, a singer of songs, a songwriter, an installation artist, and a few other things to boot. But put them all together, it's, I don't know if I'd call it a living, but it's certainly what I've done. <laughs> At the gate each year I stood as the whistle loudly blew With eyes all fixed, lips compressed, the tigers they flew too Hark to the clicking of the shears as through the wool they glide See our burly ringer, he is on the whip and side It's now something like 40 years I've been um, producing things I'll put it as things, but it includes radio programs, books recordings and concerts um, with a, a central theme of trying to investigate the Australian identity. Um, so um, it's led me on a very strange path as far as a career is concerned. So in many ways I see my job as tapping Australians on the shoulder and say, hey, you've got a unique culture, explore it. And to do that, I've also got to say, and there are books, recordings, radio programs and concert material available to do that. I've been collecting Australian stories and songs and folklore uh, since the uh, late 1960s. You want me to sing it or just... Uh, I think it would be better if you sang yeah, it. Yeah, right. Uh, I've got quite a history. I'm 65 um, in a minute. And um, thankfully still have the energy to do what I want to do. Everything I do, I have to generate myself. Um, I like writing. I like researching history. I'm working on my 17th book at the moment, so I'm fairly productive. But when I do these books, I also look at how I can market those books to get them published and make them sell. That doesn't necessarily mean that they translate into monster sales because the book market's changed and the recording market's changed. Interestingly enough, um, I never really could commit to books until I got a computer a few years ago now, but the computer allowed me to actually uh, bring sense to the design in my head of the book. Um, and I suspect I'm mainly retentive because I, I really, when I was using a typewriter, um, I, I was, it gave me the horrors that there were mistakes on the page and it was only with the computer where I could have a clean slate all the time and revise it that I felt that I was making progress and in fact that was the case. I mean, I'm very lucky. I'm in this stage of my career where I've had, you know, I've been gonged and had awards and prizes and things from the government, which is all very nice, but more important, it's about having projects that I find challenging. You know, it does remind me that when I look at my diary, that, you know, I have a really fascinating life. Um, I probably would have made a lot more money, frankly, if I'd stayed in the advertising world where I started. The highlights for me were to be able to escape from... Um, the obligations of having a business uh, or a real job, as put it that way, at uh, the end of last century when I decided that uh, you know, I wanted to write full-time and perform full-time rather than earn a living. Everything I've done, I taught myself as a record producer, radio, scriptwriter, performer, whatever. And I always say to people that I'm a graduate of the Dingo University in the School of Hard Knocks. But the greatest influences to me have been the people that I recorded. I recorded a lot of oral histories in 1970, 1971, 1972, where I went out and taped people who had lived in the 19th century. They were born in the 19th century. At the gate, My own experience tells me that by specialising in a small area rather than trying to cover the waterfront is far more effective 
discipline, self-discipline is vital. Um, look, most writers are dreamers and they always know that they've got the talent or think they have the talent, but sometimes they haven't got the discipline to put that talent into a form that can be marketed or make their work available. So, uh, you know, it's all very well to be a dreamer, but you've also got to be somebody that's going to action things. And far away in Queensland where they shear them by the score. But I've been fortunate that I can juggle all these balls at the same time, and um, I guess that's been a really big advantage to me in my career. Up to our burly ringer as he loudly calls for tar. Tar here calls one quick, the tar boy flies. Sweep those locks away, another loudly cries.